going to try to get to a couple of emails this week. The first one comes from John from Kansas City, and John writes, I've never contacted you before, but I just listened to this past weekend's podcast, and I wanted to contribute a bit to the Monsanto discussion. I just wanted to point out the two main non-science-related reasons people dislike Monsanto. First, they have actively fought pretty heavily any sort of labeling or consumer awareness initiatives. For example, there are recently... There was recently a bill in California that would require the labeling of any foods with GM ingredients to make consumers aware of what they are eating. This bill was defeated primarily due to Monsanto's campaigning against it. This just feeds the idea that they have something to hide about their products. Second, Monsanto has a history of aggressively suing farmers whose crops get cross-pollinated with their seeds. As a member of a family of farmers, this one is pretty disgusting. Since bees pollinate without regard to whose field is whose, if a farmer next to you uses Monsanto-grown GM seed, you run a high risk of some of the GM crops to show up in your field. Monsanto monitors this and does not hesitate to sue the other farmers for use of their patented seed stock. They have been ordered ordered by the courts to stop this practice, but it certainly doesn't help that the perception that they have any societal good in mind. In my opinion, Monsanto's business practices are, practices are significantly more heinous than many other consumer goods manufacturers, which I loosely define them as. This is obviously a personal opinion, but I just wanted to contribute. Thanks for all your work. So what do you guys think about that? I, I think he's right about how does how are how are they supposed to control right the uh, this pollination that 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 na- sort of what uh, for lack of a better term naturally occurs in a farming industry yeah. and what they're going to go you really you're going to go ahead and sue the people because some of your product drifted over through the yeah, winds yeah sounds outrageous right uh, crazy it's also is it true? not to be true <laughs> <laughs> that's the other part yeah is it true so it's uh, it's propaganda um so i i, I really i've read a lot of this before but over the last week because we were getting some a lot of feedback about monsanto i really did a deep dive on this particular issue so last week we talked about a news item that was discussing scientific reviews of, of studies looking at the health effects of gmo food. And the conclusions are pretty solid that there is no health risk from to humans from consuming GMO food. But there are two other issues that come up with respect to GMO. One is the business practices and economics of GMO, and the other is the environmental impact. The health effects, I think, are the easiest issue to deal with. There's no evidence of harm, and there's pretty, pretty good evidence. Uh, the studies that have been put forward showing that there is risk are all crap. You know, we've reviewed some of them on the show. The environmental issues are actually the most complicated. Uh, I, I'm actually not going to delve into that this week. I'm going to focus on the, the other thing, the, the practices of Monsanto. Now, last week I made the, the basic claim that, you know, yes, corporations need to be good citizens. They need to be, we need transparency and regulation. And I certainly believe that corporations mainly act in their own financial best interest. But I, I didn't see, I've never seen any evidence that Monsanto was any worse than the average corporation in this respect. They've just become this icon of evil. You know, they've become the boogeyman of the anti-GMO ideology. I wanted to find out what the specific cases were. Again, not to try to uh, try to look past opinion and ideology and say, okay, well, what are the cases? What, when people criticize Monsanto for their, for their business practices, give me the worst business practices that they've done and we'll, I'll take a look at what actually happened. So I'm going to discuss four cases that are the ones that keep, that I keep encountering when I read about Monsanto's business practices. If a listener feels that there's another case that better represents malfeasance on the part of Monsanto, I'm all ears. Again, I have no dog in this hunt, as they say, whatever. I'm perfectly willing to believe that Monsanto's done some squirrely, even really bad things in their behalf, but I'm just, just let me know what they are. Let, let me see the actual case. So what John is referring to is a, an, actually an, a, a Canadian case Percy Schmeiser is a farmer that was sued by Monsanto uh, for planting canola that was belonged to, you know, canola seeds that were genetically modified by Monsanto. And Monsanto said this was a violation of their patent. And this now has become the iconic case of Monsanto sues farmers who have seed blow into their farms. I've never seen any evidence that that's the case. This is what actually happened. Schmeiser noticed that some of the canola plants growing along the side of the road by his farm were not dying when when those when the the roadside was sprayed with herbicide. 
he figured, oh, this must be some of that GM, you know, herbicide resistant canola from other farms blowing in because he, he wasn't using the seeds himself. So he checked his own canola farm and uh, the one section that he investigated, he basically sprayed it with, with the Roundup and 60% of the plants in his farm were GMO, were, were the Monsanto Roundup ready canola plants. He was not sued for that. He was not sued for that. What he was sued for was this. The next year, he took only the GM seeds from his, from the plants that blew into his property and he planted his entire canola fields with GM seeds. When those uh, farms were investigated, they were found to be 98% GMO, which does not happen by accident. So he was sued for using those seeds deliberately to bypass Monsanto's patent. That's what he was sued for. The Canadian Supreme Court agreed with Monsanto and, and ruled in their favor. Another similar case, uh, Bowman versus Monsanto, a farmer purchased GMO seed grain that was sold as feed. Now, feed and, and planting seeds are the same thing, right? Uh, but you can't, you know, when, when you buy seed from Monsanto that's genetically modified, you're buying it for a single planting, and that's your contract. You're contracted for a single planting. You can't harvest the seeds and replant them because if you were allowed to do that, then Monsanto's patent becomes worthless, right? If, if you say that once you, any seeds that derive from the GM plants, if you're allowed to do whatever you want with them, then, then literally Monsanto seed patents are worthless at that point. Right. I can't buy something on iTunes and then go and then resell using it. it for my yeah. own purposes, selling it, sharing it, or whatever. You can I use it. it. You can use it for your license to use it in a very a, limited way. That's right. That's yeah. right. So it's the same thing with the seed. You're licensed for one planting, and that's it. And Monsanto has been very aggressive, absolutely, in protecting their pa- patent and not allowing any argument that ever says that any of their own seeds, the seeds that they developed and they patented, are outside the reach of their patent. Because wh- once a single seed is outside the reach of their patent, it's over. That you know, variety, they, the market will evaporate because then the seeds can reproduce themselves, right? So Bowman, he wanted to do another planting, and he wanted he wanted the GM seeds because he, he, they're, they were cost effective. So he bought the feed seed and then planted mm-hmm. that in violation of uh, Monsanto's patent. He deliberately was circumventing the patent. Yep, misused. Yep, so Monsanto sued him for doing that. Um, this case went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, and this is just this year. The Supreme Court did, ruled in favor of Monsanto 9-0, to zero, which means That's even r- the most liberal wow. judges agreed that Monsanto's patent covered those seeds. You don't get 9-0 Bowman, zero decisions often. Yeah, you don't get 9-0, to zero to, and, and the Obama administration filed an amicus brief in favor of Monsanto's position because mm-hmm. they realized that. So the, the argument that Bowman was making was that, was that what's called patent exhaustion, which means that like once you buy something, then you have the right to do with it what you will. And the pat, the company is no longer covered, covered by the patent, right? Mm-hmm. They're no longer protected by their patent. Um, but the Supreme Court agreed that with Monsanto that um, if that were the case for GM seeds, then the patents would be worthless. And therefore, you know, the biotech industry in, in general is not viable um, if they can't, if the, the fruits of their research are not protected by patents. So they rejected the exhaustion, the patent exhaustion argument and ruled in favor of Monsanto. And again, it was not really a legally controversial decision. Universities, industry, anyone, any industry that has to invest a lot of money and then protect the, their intellectual property with patents was absolutely on the side of Monsanto mm-hmm. because the patent exhaustion argument would have destroyed the utility of a lot of patents, not just in the biotech industry. Mm-hmm. Why can't he genetically modify plants so that don't produce any seeds? That would that would be nice. Well, the, well, the, you have the seeds are the food, right? It's like you know, but, but all right. So this this is not one of my cases that I found, but I did. Monsanto was criticized for developing Terminator seeds. You guys ever hear that term? These are seeds that are sterile. So there you go. They're very powerful. They, uh, how's that yeah, work? The t- <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So in other words, like you you have GM corn. And the corn kernels are use, usable as food, but they will not, you can't grow plants from them. They're, they're sterile. 
<laughs> yeah, um, so therefore, it completely eliminates the possibility of getting a second planting out of the seeds that you buy from Monsanto. Now, Monsanto claims that it did this to in order to avoid its genetically modified genes getting into the environment. This was supposed to protect the environment. But they okay. were criticized of doing this in order to maintain their monopoly over the seeds. And they actually ended the program and have said that they have no intention of ever marketing Terminator seeds. Um, but that's something else that Why? you might hear as another – more evidence that they're evil, something they never actually marketed. Uh, one other case I found was uh, 73 organic and conventional farmer seed companies advocacy groups sued Monsanto preemptively in March of 2011, arguing that they needed to protect themselves from Monsanto suing them for seed blowing onto their farms. Again, they're misinterpreting – the Schmeiser case. This case was thrown out as frivolous, and that judgment was upheld on appeal. Uh, Monsanto, you know, said they have absolutely no intention of ever suing anybody who does not want to steal their seeds. They're su only suing people who are deliberately using their seeds and violating their patent. Mm -hmm. And they said it's ridiculous. You know, if you, they're never going to sue anybody because seed blows onto their farm. And if the organic farmers are saying, we don't want your GM seeds on our farm, good, then Monsanto has absolutely no incentive to sue you. And they never have. So that was a completely fabricated case invented just to get a PR, you know, hit against Monsanto. And if you exactly. read, if you read the lawyer, the, the spokesman for the farmers who sued Monsanto, they say, that they do not think that seeds should be patentable. So they have a clear, one-sided, ideological yeah. position. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a separate question. And, and I'm fine with people who say they don't think that living organisms should be allowed to be patented. If that's your position, that's fine. Then make that the debate, not trumped up cases about a company defending their patents. The last case was, um, well, I also, you know, related to, um, oh, this is a very interesting. So Greenpeace accused Monsanto of biopiracy bio for patenting an existing Arr. cultivar. <laughs> so this is another one that this is the way the story is presented by the, in, the anti GMO contingent is that Monsanto patented a particular kind of wheat called Nap Hal, which is grown in India. It has lo a, a lower amount of gluten, and it's therefore very usable for for making flat breads that are that are used in in uh, parts of India. Non so they said, yeah, that uh, um, Monsanto basically you know stole this wheat from the Indian farmers who cultivated it themselves over years, and they were doing this in order to monopolize their you know their wheat industry. And it was just pure biopiracy. Here's the real story. <laughs> the Sail real the story, seven seeds. It, the real story is that another company by the name of Unilever, they bought some of the Napahal seeds and then they developed from them, they, they cultivated from them a new variety called Galatea. And then they pat, they, they filed for a patent for this new variety called Galatea. Monsanto purchased the company Unilever and in so doing acquired the patent application for the Galatea. And the, several years later, that patent was granted. So they had a patent on this cultivar of wheat. Monsanto did not file the patent. They didn't create this variety. They just acquired it as part of a purchase of another company. Of course, the anti-GMO people went crazy because now Monsanto's involved. They're like, oh, Monsanto's trying to abuse and exploit, you know, these Indian wheat farmers. Monsanto, first of all, said, um, we have no intention of exploiting this patent. And they never did. They never did anything with this patent. In fact, they were getting out of the uh the the wheat you know game in Europe in at any case so they really weren't interested in going in this direction but greenpeace used this to accuse them of biopiracy now the one element of legitimate criticism here and this really applies to unilever you know that cuz monsanto didn't do this the company they bought did it is that the uh, galatea variety really didn't have anything new or beneficial that wasn't already present in the Nopal, the older wheat variety that was developed through normal cultivation processes by Indian farmers over generations. So they basically took an existing variety of wheat, tweaked it, and patented it 
but they didn't really do anything, make anything new or unique. And then eventually they actually, um, you know, Greenpeace did sue on those grounds and, um, the patent was revoked. But, you know, Monsanto never did anything with the patent anyway. It was all literally, it was just all hysteria. It, it was just all mm-hmm. trumped up to try, because to, to make, to, to attack, uh, Monsanto, in my opinion. So those are the cases that keep coming up. If there's other cases out there you want me to know about, tell me. I'll look into them. Again, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying categorically that Monsanto has never done anything squirrely. It's, it all comes down to this. When you read like Greenpeace and all the people who criticize it, they all come back to no company should have a patent on any life form, including any seed. Okay, fine. Then how are you going to have a biotech industry? Of course, they don't want mm-hmm. a biotech industry because they're against right. GMO in the first place. So the fact that there's nobody developing genetically modified products doesn't bother them at all. It's really easy to to interpret everything that you just said in a very negative, anti-corporate way, right? Like those, you yeah. can easily easily make an argument where you're like, yeah, but that's that's BS. They knew that they were going to buy that company and they knew that they were going to get their hands on that patent. You can make everything seem sinister, but the facts are the facts. You know, without having to interpret anything one way or the other, the fact is, yes, Monsanto defends their patents. Absolutely. Because they understand that if seeds get outside the reach of their patent, that their market can be destroyed. They've never sued anybody because seeds blown onto their farm. They never exploited that wheat patent that they acquired from Unilever. They said they weren't going to, and they didn't. Those are the facts. Those are the indisputable facts. Now, the, 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 how you interpret their motives, things that you can't really know, that's, that's ideology. That's going to be your own personal bias. And again, I have no bias one way or the other. What I don't like are these cases being presented in a distorted fashion that are, that is not factually accurate in order to portray Monsanto to demonize them, as I said last week, to demonize this company, to make them the evil icon of genetically modified food and the biotech industry. It's that is propaganda. That that's that's not the facts. If we if we're going to have an argument about what the limits of patenting seeds should be, let's have a, dis- a risk versus benefit. You know, what are the pluses and minuses? Do we want a biotech industry? They have to benefit the from the from the their their research and their investment. This is exactly like the pharmaceutical industry, right? The pharmaceutical industry, they invest hundreds of millions of dollars developing pharmaceuticals. Yes, these are critical to the health and well being of the populace, but they're allowed to make money off of their patents. You know, they have it they're granted a limited exclusivity. They defend their patents jealous jealously. Monsanto's no different than than the pharmaceutical industry in this regard. And I've, I, you know, the pharmaceutical companies do squirrely things all the time and outright illegal things sometimes. They get, you know, they get, um, uh, fined and, and judgments against them for doing things that they're, that they shouldn't do all the time. Uh, in fact, I think, uh, from what I've seen, I, I don't think Monsanto is even any, is any worse than your average pharmaceutical company. Uh, but it is, it's all just big agro conspiracy mongering. And it is part of an anti-GMO ideological agenda. But you ask anybody in the public, and they go, oh, yeah, Monsanto sues farmers for seeds blowing onto their farm. Yeah, Everyone it's, become, that, the narr- right? it's yeah, become the okay. narrative. It's the now. narrative. Yeah, that gets it's out. Too, it's that's too bad. It. It's, it's, it's reality. It's irrelevant to the whole GMO thing, in my opinion, at least to, you know, to the, the health and environmental issues. It's all a matter of how are we going to regulate the biotech industry? How are we going to protect the incentive of doing research? What without hurting farmers? I understand that now farmers have to buy seeds and they can't just replant their own seeds. But this is a bargain that we have to make. You know, maybe we could explore other ways. You know, uh, Monsanto could license seeds for a certain limited number of replantings. I don't know. Uh, there may be other options that can be explored here. And I do think that um, the industry has to exp- has to. I don't think that Monsanto's self-interest, their profits and their patents are the only thing that need to be defended here, the only issue here. Absolutely, we also need to consider the economics of farms, of, you know, the, of the family farm in addition to large industrial farms and, and have the whole system work. I get that. That's perfectly reasonable. Yeah. But let's do it within the law with the facts. Let's have a real fact-based discussion and not base it on distorted propaganda. Again, if, if there's a case to be made against the way the industry is currently being regulated, distorting the information just discredits your side. Yeah. When you find out what the real information is, you realize, okay, yeah. they're, they're just lying. Then mm-hmm. 
you know, it actually hurts that side of the equation, in my opinion. And again, this is what I found researching this as heavily as I could for the last week. If somebody thinks there's a case out there that is a better representation of the situation, send it to me. We'll talk about it. I'll do, I'll investigate it as much as I can myself. 